ready to go? I'm ready. Awesome. Okay, welcome to episode four of Living Your Life with Leanne Lang. This podcast brought to you by Extension Marketing. For more information, check out extensionmarketing.com. Okay, so what does your medicine cabinet look like? How often are you taking medication? What are you actually taking the medication for? Are there alternatives that you could be considering? And the big question these days, are we over medicating? That is the subject that we're gonna be talking about today. And I am joined by clinical pharmacist, Kent McLeod, the founder and CEO of NutriChem. Oh, Kent, it's so great to have you on board. Thank you for having me. I am excited. And the thing is there's so much to cover, but I wanna go back to just the basis of NutriChem so people get a better understanding. Are you able to do a Coles Notes version of exactly what NutriChem is? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I went to university, took biochemistry, went to, then got a degree in pharmacology, became a pharmacist. And I remember, I always tell people, I said, you know, what if to go to a pharmacist and actually have him give you the truth about what's tr- effective and, and, and could harm you and, and, and not be biased or look at, look at everything. And in a with and compare everything, be able to compare everything, whether it's exercise to the effects of a drug or food to the effects of a drug or a nutrient to the effects of a drug. Why why don't we have access to that? And and the astounding thing was that people were surprised by the novelty and still are to mm-hmm. this day, about the novelty of actually someone having that interest. It's very bizarre that that's a novel idea. Well, NutriChem has uh, established itself. And as you mentioned, it's been over 30 years that you've been in business. So when people are coming in, is it the pharmacy aspect? Is it the clinical aspect? Like what what information or what product are they then going into it with or coming out with? The problem is, is that people come, people have pre- preconceived notions about pharmacy, right? They Don't you just take the pills from the big bottle and, and do what other people tell you to do. You know, in our, from our perspective, the, the, a prescription or, or your diagnosis from anybody, whether you'd self-diagnose or someone diagnoses you, is just the beginning. Your, your choices of what you do with that diagnosis should be actually being made according to really good science and and of all the options that are available to you. But that's not what happens. So a prescription to us is just the tip of the iceberg, right? What is, is it the safest thing, the most effective, the most cost effective? People aren't completely, are completely unaware of the real data or science behind or the marketing and Mm -hmm. the machinery behind what people are actually getting. It's so disturbing that sometimes even I get, I go, this can't be happening, and it happens. There's big pharma business. There's uh, the money that pharmacists can make just on filling out prescriptions. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the consumer, to the individual. What responsibility do they need to take when they go to their doctor, they talk about their symptoms, they've tried to figure out what is happening, they come out with that piece of paper with the doctor's writing that we can never read, and we take it to our pharmacist. What are the questions? What do we need to be thinking about and asking as we're going down this path? Well, the, the problem is, you know, the biggest problem is, is, that, is that is how are they going to be actually um, being aware of some of the profound misinformation from from right from the doctor to to what you're going to get as a as a piece of paper i mean the misinformation is so profound that it it, it shakes you to the core so you so well, okay can you give the, me an, can you give me an example of that like what kind of misinformation are we getting that we're so okay, not in tune with it i I'm, I'm currently right in the middle of this right now so um uh i sell I have a lot of Europeans that use my products, so I have a multinational business, and and I specialize in in uh, trisomy twenty one, autism, and inborn errors of metabolism. So I have a very big biochemical lab that helps um, with people with specific disorders, and we make customized compounds for these people all over the world. So it's a very cool thing that I do. Now in Austria, they just released a document 
saying that the and all our parents in Austria are concerned because the European Union is, has released a statement saying cautious vitamin B6 there could be potential harm with vitamin B6 okay so of course parents are going what you're giving my I'm giving my kid vitamin B6 my doctor is telling me it could be causing harm okay so that's one piece of information now the context of that is that in a woman who is on a oral contraceptive or birth control pill she is 34 like 75 percent three out of four women who take a birth control pill are vitamin b6 deficient okay that's proven okay i didn't know this okay mm -hmm. and Vitamin B6 is essential for what? Anxiety, mood, right? Mood regulation, it affects blood sugar regulation, cognition. So three quarters of the women, a young woman is B6 deficient. B6 in meta-analysis, not in one study, but in repeated randomized control studies, so-called the gold standard, has been proven to be effective for mood and depression in young women okay now so we have something like vitamin b6 it's proven to be deficient in young women we then move to the big pharma side okay what happens if your young daughter i mean i have three daughters is diagnosed with depression right you go to a doctor the odds are very high that she may be given a prescription for an antidepressant what is the evidence of antidepressants? Do you know that there's a, an act in the U.S. called the, uh, the REIT Act to, is to recover invisible and abandoned trials act. So what they did was they showed that the major antidepressant study done in the U.S. on adolescents with antidepressants actually was fraudulent and and they neglected to show that the, the drugs, the antidepressant drugs in adolescents, okay, was not effective, that in, and they minimized by up to 22 times the risks and harms associated with antidepressant drugs in, anti, anti, in adolescents. So it's, they were fined, Ms. Glock's of uh, Klein was, was fined $5 billion for this fraud. But this, this, this has been gone on, gone on and on with antidepressant drugs, for for years. And I thought, okay, well now they're fine for this fraud, this this, these drugs that 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 are harming kids, right? That have no evidence. They don't work better than placebo. And increase risk of suicide by up to fourteen times. Have all these terrible side effects. Surely, you know, we're going to find out about all things like vitamin B six. No. We still have unbelievable governments saying um, vitamin B6 can go cause harm. And even gets more sinister because if you actually look in the B6, you're going, well, how could this, my parents go, how could this be true? There must be some evidence that actually B6 caused harm. Well, actually, where it causes harm is as you age, you lose the, the ability to convert Act B6 from a vitamin or in your diet to the active form because of changes in your gut chemistry. So actually what happens is that in, in, as you become more older and frail, you actually need to actually use the active forms of vitamin B6 because if you don't, you're more prone to actually trigger more B6 deficiency using the wrong kind. So that's all proven. And when you use the active form, it works better. And oh, by the way, it helps with cognition, depression, anxiety in the elderly. And, and you begin to go, but, but you're saying that it's causing harm. You're, you're, not only, you're not only not taking the fraudulent action of big pharma giving drugs to young people, you're end throwing out ridiculous misinformation about vitamin B6 which is deficient in an adolescent if she's on and birth control 75% of the time. And you, you go, how can this be? I'm not making this up. Like almost to the point where people are going, 
well, how could that be true? Because it would it would create a a scam on a on a on a huge scale. I go, yes, they were fined five billion dollars for scamming people on drugs and kids. I mean, but this one, isn't something one of my that we're kids' classmates about. actually killed himself on initiating one of these antidepressant drugs when they were growing up. And I'm going, I knew about this stuff. It wasn't, but they they showed this study to the parents who have the horror of having one of your, who's, who was a healthy, no history of mental health. So there's these parents are going, well, my, I, well he broke up with a, my girlfriend and now you, my doctor gave him some pill and then he went and killed himself. And then they're telling him the pill had nothing to do with it. The, the antidepressant had nothing to do with it. Until of course we've come today, we've re-examined the studies and said, you guys are crooks. The drug didn't work, and you, and and you. So something like B6, vitamin B6. Can you imagine, right? Something as simple as vitamin B6. Why someone comes to see me, and and you. So you, when you ask me, what do I do with this piece of paper? And maybe I see a young girl coming in with a piece of paper for an antidepressant, which has no evidence of benefit and has all these terrible side effects. You can't get off them. It triggers a cascade of more prescriptions, increases weight gain, does this, cognitive deficits, gut problems, all, I mean, it goes on and on. And I'm going, your daughter's, well, you know, on an oral contraceptive, have, you should be using pyridoxal 5-phosphate, B6. And they're going, whoa, whoa, that's salt. Is that not alternative medicine? Isn't that uh, woo-woo stuff? My doctor... You know, and you see, they're not even aware of the, the extent of, of the disruption. Is that frustrating for you? You see a, a mother walk in with a young daughter looking for the simple answer. But, but the actual simple answer <laughs> is safe. It, see, it's, it's completely the opposite. They think the drug is safe and effective and that vitamin B6 is ineffective and harmful. This is the. This is the battle that you're up this against. This is the battle. So is it? Is this with most medications? Is this with a certain demographic? A certain. Now I'm, like, I'm on. Like, a, I'm on the. Uh, I mean, I'm on the deprescribing committee of. Uh, okay. What? Uh, let's talk about that. What exactly is deprescribing? What it is is what I've been doing for thirty years, which is saying don't take dumb drugs until you like an antidepressant when your kid. If you have a daughter without giving a trial of vitamin B6, it doesn't mean there may not be a role for these drugs, but in mild to moderate problems, you shouldn't be giving a dangerous drug when something like vitamin B6 is proven to be safe and effective, right? So that's, so deprescribing is where finally I have a group of pharmacists and doctors who are seeing the, the universities, my, U, the University of Toronto, where I came from, McGill, Canadian government, they're actually professionals like me, who are going, stop giving drugs that have no evidence to kill people. So deep prescribing is literally where we're going, okay, let's target some of the most dangerous drugs that are actually killing people that don't work. Okay. Are there a couple of examples of what are the biggest ones that you're looking to get to have the conversation, the dialogue with patients as to why you're behind deep prescribing them for yes. them? Okay. So... For example, is trying to go, and again, you know, if I get into the antidepressant medication, of course, then you need to have an evaluation of that per. So there's there's it, a lot of layers. There's I would layers think. in it. It's not so simple as right. B six or not, but it, in straight paper or not, I'm just giving a real. You know, there's absolutely layers that people aren't even aware of. So there's layers when it comes to depression. One of my number one targets. There is no layer. And it actually relates to mood and depression. It's the drugs called PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. So these drugs are given, are the number three prescribed drugs in Canada. And up to, and they should be given for a very short duration in a very specific, very specific reasons. And up to 70%, and actually we think it's more, 70% of these drugs are given are misprescribed, meaning literally given for the wrong reason or shouldn't be given at all. And what does that mean? So these PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, 
number three prescribed drug in Canada, shut down acid in the stomach. So you go into a doctor for our going, oh, I have stomach problems. Here, here's a drug for you. Oh, no big deal. Just so this is, uh, so okay. It's so like essentially. So like uh, acid problems or di digestive issues or. Exactly. Okay. Anything. Anything. Okay. So anything to do with your stomach, people can be giving these drugs. Okay. The problem with them is that I'm actually writing a book on this. One of my things this year I'm doing is on the relationship of your gut chemistry. It actually relates to B6, the way you activate it, but the relationship of your gut chemistry to your mental health and the way your brain forms. So what happens is if you take this drug, okay, and you thought it was for your stomach, we now know, and this is, and now the, the amount of studies on this relation is 6,000 studies a month, a month. 6,000 a month? A month. Okay. So it's not like woo-woo stuff. So you take this drug, okay, it increases your risk of Alzheimer's disease by 40%. You take this drug, it increases your risk of kidney failure. You take this drug, it increases your risk of bone fracture. You take this drug, it increases your risk of oops, anxiety and depression. You take this drug, you it doesn't fix your stomach problems, it actually makes them worse. You get more, more risk of serious life-threatening infections. It disrupts your immune system. This little antacid drug is killing thousands of people. It increases your risk of death by more than one, so an extra one in 500 people die, which actually will make it one of the most dangerous things, but of course you don't, people go, well, how am I dying of something in my stomach? I'm going, because your gut, the microbiome, this bacteria, this organ that you're, is, is the most profound organ that, that's actually found in your body, and actually your digestive problem your, your, in itself that you're coming with is the biggest risk factor for, oops, mental health problems, correlates 90%, diabetes, so, diabetes, all these different things. So to give someone that that's actually their body is screaming for the right, correct nutritional intervention, a drug which doesn't work, which then now actually aggravates the underlying and it completely takes that organ which is crucial for your brain, your heart, your body, your weight regulation, how your, your weight set point, and you mess with it with the drug, and people are doing like so. When you say someone comes in with a little piece of paper, right. and they're going, "This is nothing." Oh, can I? Oh, I can. Uh, is how much is it? Can I save a dollar on this thing, or is is this covered my insurance plan? You know. And and by the way, isn't that something, right? We're all paying for this stuff. We're is covered by our government plans, our insurance plans. So you get on one drug, like a PPI, now your brain isn't working, you're depressed, your blood, your weight goes up, you take your kidney, so you just, you become a, a financial machine in terms of, of, of all other cascading health issues. It's a domino effect. It's a domino effect. So, so that's one drug, just PPIs okay. so, that nobody knows so about. So now let me ask you, so a, a, a patient comes in with a piece of paper that's recommending this this PPI. Mm -hmm. What is the dialogue that you have with them? Or what right. is it that you're able to recreate or if you're compounding that that you're trying to be able to have a positive so we're, effect? We're, we're changing the dialogue. So I'm go so when someone comes in, I'm that's actually That's what you're doing. You're changing the dialogue. We're changing okay. the dialogue. I said and first of all we're going you know we're, we're we're it's tricky, right? We're saying I actually showed them a piece of paper and I said, "You know what an iceberg is, right?" And I go, yeah, well, the prescription's the tip of the iceberg. All the other issues, like, are underneath. Like, for example, tell me, you have a digestive problem. Are you interested in getting to the root cause of your digestive problem? Do you understand this drug has nothing to do with the root cause of your digestive problem? Are you aware of the implications of this one prescription? Are you, do you care about the implications of this? You know, maybe your interest is cheap and fast. But tell me, what is your interest? You know, are you interested in the long-term implications of this, this decision? Right? Are you interested in this stuff? You have a depression pill. Are you interested in, in getting to the root cause of it? Are you aware of the long-term implications? Are you aware of all these other issues? Do you want to explore things like that affect it? Okay. 
Wow. When you ask, I'm going, what is this? You, I just want my prescription, man. Can I go? Maybe I should go uh, to the Walmart here. Right. But when you ask an individual, are you willing to get to the root cause of what is causing these issues? That, for many people, is the most difficult aspect of dealing with their health. So Correct. what happens when you ask, ask them that honest question? Well, what you're trying to do is at least find out where their head, what their head is at. Because pe- how many people have ever asked you that walking into a place? Really? So you got a prescription. Really? Are you really interested in anything other than the superficial issue around when do I take it? Is in the morning with food? How much is it? And can, and can I get out of here quickly? Because I have, you know, somebody's waiting for me in the car. Do you, do, are you aware this is, could be a life-altering moment for you, this decision? What? No one's, it's almost like, well, no one's ever said this to me. Yeah, I know. Isn't that, that's the tragedy of this, is that no one's ever said this. Why do you think we have dry, drug crises? Why do you think we have all these problems with drugs? Why do you think drugs are one of the top killers of people? But we always think, well, I'm going to a really good guy. He wouldn't hurt me. I said, no one's hurting you on purpose. This is the evidence. Do you want to hear it? Or do you want to, or do you... You want, you, you're going to go with the sort of, I hope it's okay school. Okay, so based on your 30 year experience, what typically are the root causes when you actually ask them that question? This podcast is brought to you by Extension Marketing. They are a new breed of marketing agency that acts as your virtual marketing department, designing and implementing cost effective marketing strategies that will grow your business. I can speak to this personally as I've been using the Extension Marketing team to help me launch and grow my business. Founder Pat Whalen has been a lifesaver for me, a genuine coach guiding me along the way into uncharted territory. Tell them you're a friend of the show and receive a free one-hour consultation. Check them out at extensionmarketing.com. What typically are those root causes that people... You know, it's actually getting really simple and it's not confusing. It is so not confusing. It is It is so... It's, it's the irony of, of as we go deeper and deeper in there. It's just not confusing. What technology has done is prove the obvious, and technology allows you to go deeper. So I mean, we have we can te- when, so here it is. The first thing is the root thing for all you know from weight regulation, diabetes, mood, brain development, brain structure uh, is your microbiome, and your microbiome is that unbelievable uh, organ that has more cells than your whole body that regulates all of these, really your, your immune system, regulates all of these important things. Now, the problem is you can't fix a microbiome with a pill. You know what I mean? With ma- a magic people, a pill. Three qu- people say, well, maybe it's not something probiotics will go. Yeah, the problem is three quarters of your microbiome or bacteria that die outside the body. You can't take a pill for those bacteria. Oh, okay, so how do I fix the microbiome? Which is proven in 6,000 studies per month. Per month, yes. To have these effects. Oh, well actually you have to eat less crap in your diet. You have to feed it proper fiber, which only can come from fruits and vegetables. And you, have to know how much soluble fiber is in your diet. And if you're on getting enough, you have to actually get more. So, and when you do these microbiome shifts, by the way, it deals with everything. And I did, I did. I actually presented the role of the microbiome in addiction to the, the biggest addiction conference in Canada with a big so I came up and I said, there's 6,000 studies a month. Here's the evidence on this and addiction. And here's how I treat addicts. Imagine me treating an addict by fixing his gut first. And then saying, Without any, with no medication. With no with drugs. Any, yes. Oh, From a pharmacist, uh, no drugs. No drugs. Because the drugs don't work, right? My, here I am, if you're a pharmacist, I'm going, well, hey, I've been using the same drugs and addiction for 30 years. We're now into harm reduction therapies. Meanwhile, if I fix your gut and your microbiome, your cravings and your addictions go away. Can you believe that? I want to believe that people can change the mindset of... But so that's, you just see, but you can't do it without, why do you, I have three nutritionists on staff. I said, you need to fix what you stick in your mouth. And if you do it for 30 days, I'll change your life. 30 days. 
but you, they need support, right? They know, right. know how to. So first thing is, you know, is food. Well, first Sounds thing, no, crazy. First, how crazy I'm, is no, this, No, right? I'm sorry. First thing was you asking the question that people don't always ask, and that is, do you want to get to the root cause of why it is that you're taking the medications in the first place? Right. That, that often doesn't happen. No. And then from there is, as we mentioned, that, that domino effect. So, you know, you talk about your lab and your place, like you have three nutritionists on hand because if you're going to have this discussion, you better have the backup. That's, that's the whole problem too, isn't it, right? If you're going to say you're going to solve the problem, you better have the backup, right? You better have your, your tools. So the first layer is your gut mm -hmm. and understanding you can't just go, you get it in your diet. You have to go, no, no soluble fiber which doesn't go in this end and out the other end it actually grows those three quarters of the bacteria that improve your brain your mood your energy your weight regulation I mean you fix your diabetes type certain types and you have to do it it prevents oh by the way you're not getting enough according to the Canada food guide which nobody gets so we're just following food guide but you got to do it. There's no, and then when you get all these good changes, you lock it in with fiber. And if you have to throw a scoop of fiber in, big deal. You know, when you have these monster 12,000 square foot stores, you try and find some fiber that isn't, oh, oh, I know we found some fiber, but it's all sugar. Oh, what a great idea. Don't, don't get me started on the sugar. Okay. <laughs> we, well, we, of course, we're covering you that. cannot yeah. grow a healthy right. structure with, with, with all the sugar that's hidden in our food supply, right? which is another topic, but it, it is not. It's on point. Sugar disrupts the microbiome. The next layer is nutrients, right? So then there is individual biochemical, nutritional, microbiome issues that affect your nutrient status. So yes, if you're, need, if you're a certain risk group, like a young female, you should be supplementing with pyridoxal or an elderly person or, black, or all these at-risk groups you should be supplementing with the appropriate nutrients because they're proven to be effective and without any risk. Okay, that's your next layer. The next layer is hormones, right? Like, what's your thyroid doing? What's your hormonal stasis? What's going on with your adrenal function? So you just move up. And then that's all in the context of your genetics, right? How does your body, what, how is your And we're bodily, all very different, right? We're I all think, different. Yeah. And how our gut works. Uh, certain genes affect the nutrients that we take, certain genes affect this. So, you know, there it is. Now, it doesn't mean as a pharmacist there isn't a role for drugs. It just means why is how are you going to fix those things with a PPI, which disrupts the, the base, or an antidepressant, which has nothing to do. Do you, do you, know, that, do you know that we know now in those 6,000 studies that serotonin, is made in your gut. So all this, these drugs are what we call SSRI, serotonin reuptake. So they're manipulating all the, these drugs that don't work that kill people. We manipulate serotonin in the brain. Well, where does serotonin come from? Oh my God, from the gut. And even the regulation of serotonin availability to the brain is regulated by the gut in those 6,000 studies. Oh, and B6 is crucial to allow that serotonin from the gut to activate in the brain. Oh, how crazy is that? Why would we not be thinking this way versus hoping the next drug is going to solve our problems? Do you, I, I, you can, we have a whole field of psychobiology. We know the bacteria that actually builds serotonin in your brain. You can actually engineer right now. is so close to being able to engineer your brain chemistry through your gut. Literally saying, oh, you need this fiber, it'll grow more dopamine. You need this bacteria, it'll, it'll grow more serotonin. Look, you're low in it. You can measure these things. You can start. It's, it's, it's the future, right? It's, it's sort of taking what we knew intuitively that food is important for you and beginning, and beginning to actually scientifically. See, scientifically say, well, that's true, duh. <laughs> <laughs> and... And you need more of this structure or this. And, you know, we, there are certain fibers that grow the protective lining of the stomach and the bladder. And, and you can give those fibers. And it's just like you can't get any. So the science is exciting because now in those 6,000 studies, it's like, oh, okay, how do we grow, uh, you know, Acromantia or Clostridia cluster 4? You can't give it in a pill. No big pharma company is going to do it because it doesn't grow outside the body. You have to do it with food or, or food-like supplements. 
you, we started to talk about the science behind things. And, mm. and I want to be able to transfer that into what it is that you guys do because you do this BCB test. What, what well, is in that? Well, in my world, I, I, you know, I think that this, in my world, when I speak to someone, I just find it more efficient to have all the information from them about their nutrient status. We can begin to probe the microbiome. We can see which, which um, bacteria. So we know that certain guts are creating unhealthy what we call xenobiotics or products that are disruptive to the brain and the body. So we can see disruptions in the gut. I can see if you're iron deficient, B12 deficient, you know, B6, def B1 deficient. You just, you know, why my world, why spend time chatting with you if it's a, if to me it's a life and death conversation. We spend millions and billions and trillions on cuckoo drugs, but if when I want to see you, I'm going, okay, why don't we have the science of what's actually in front of me? What's your hormones? What's your thyroid? So that I'm having a legitimate scientific discussion about where we start. Okay, and so what does this test do? Like I measure your microbiome. Okay. I probe of the microbiome, all your nutrients, your hormonal status. Those, those basis of health, right? So you'll be able to monitor and see it. Yeah. And then what are you able to do with the results? Well, then we we are able to target, you know, your your diet more so than we would without that information. We can target what, you know, why do you take, you know, if your B6 is, we, we can target your nutrients. Um, we're adding genetics. We can target your nutrients according to genetics. What about a woman going through, like, different life changes, going into menopause, going you know, you like... Know what's, you know, it's fascinating and it starts to make sense, right? So, you know, uh, I've been talking about hormones in women forever because, again, why are you giving women antidepressants, which have terrible side effects, don't work very well, relative to giving the correct hormones, which through in misinformation are perceived to be harmful. So actually, the correct hormones don't increase risk of cancer, and improve all the symptoms that a menopausal woman would have. So to me, it was back in those days, and it was 20 years ago, it's like, well, give safer drug. You know, it's an evolutionary than an unsafer drug. Today, we wouldn't give any hormone to a woman until we fixed her microbiome. Because we see so many benefits to regulating. The, so we, we actually have what we call an astrobiome, literally, the gut regulates your hormonal metabolism and function. So today, I will, if you were having a PMS woman, a perimenopausal woman, obviously I'll give her B6 and whatever, but the, one of the reasons for that disruption, again, always digging underneath it, right? One of the reasons for the B6 disruption is related to the estrobiome in women. So you change the woman's gut chemistry her hormonal symptoms can improve dramatically or even disappear. If you're able to get them to that point of it being able to disappear, therefore they're not on medications. They're not taking anything. True. Are they taking anything that's been compounded by you? Yeah, so what we trend to do is comp, we trend. Like what would be in the compounds, right? Yeah, like so what, what we would together? do is because in the reality is the more information that we have about you, the more you would trend to say, well, you need more of this vitamin or less of this. Even with a woman in menopause, after we've done microbiome work and her nutrients are balanced, her symptoms generally improve. Or then we'll say, oh, you just need a little bit of estrogen or progesterone maybe for vaginal dryness or maintain your bones or, or to improve your sleep. Mm -hmm. We just need a little touch of something just to finish things off. So everything is individualized then, right? You're not just saying, here's a sleeping pill, here's a cl oh, cholesterol levels improve. You know what I mean? It just it goes to everything, right? So you just, you're not giving all these drugs to manage these symptoms. You're starting from the base up and symptoms improve, and then you're just left with what's left over. People come often with shopping lists of symptoms. I'm going, and I'm listening, I'm listening, and they think, are you listening to me? I go, absolutely. Look, you, you've you been shopping your list of symptoms to doctors forever, right? Today, we're going to start at the bottom and then see what's left. You see, you see the difference? No, I, I absolutely see the difference. Can I ask what, what would happen with an individual who needs to take certain medications, either that are going through an illness? Like what happens with a, a cancer patient or a patient um, who's 
is dealing with heart conditions. Like, well, how, 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 yeah, how yeah. are you able to then with the with sometimes the patient dreading having to take certain drugs or medications, that's, knowing that the, but it's the, life saving. See, so, the other the other side also comes in is right. trust because what happens too in the world and it's a real problem out there. People then become they don't trust anything. I have people that come to me and go, no, no, you need to take this drug. No, please take this drug. Take this one, take this one, please. The evidence is in your favor. Take the drug, please. And you know what? They take the drug. But they, they, what people do, do you know how many people don't take drugs that are prescribed nowadays? So in the pharmacy world, everyone's going, how do we get more compliance? How, and they're... And I've been at these conferences going, you know, most people don't fill their prescriptions or they aren't taking the drugs. Don't they know all the harm? And, and I actually, every once in a while I go to these conventions and I go, well, why don't you tell them the truth? And they look at me like, what? Stop giving them the drugs that hurt them and they will take the drugs that are effective. It's so, it, and they look at me like I'm some kind of, uh, of crazy person. Well, isn't everything effective? No, absolutely not. Why would you give someone... A PPI, all these drugs, opioids that don't work, PPIs that don't work, antidepressants that don't work. You're drugging seniors. I'm in these these groups where we're, the average senior is getting 10 to 15 prescriptions and we're killing seniors with drugs. Stop it. Then maybe you'll get more compliance with people that are going to trust you. People are, are desperate though, Kent. People are in pain. They want, uh, let, let's talk a bit about pain, right? Like, so do you, you just the, want to be able to get, okay. you want to get through your day. So let's, let's, let's talk, let's, about, talk, let's, let's talk, talk about pain. Okay. I love to talk about okay. pain. Again, pain is a perfect example. So what happens when your microbiome is disrupted? Again, thousands of studies. 6,000 a month. <laughs> when your microbiome is disrupted, you create this, central nervous system sensitivity. You disrupt, you create an autonome, a sympathetic disruption. Your, your nervous system, your adrenal system, through direct and indirect messaging is disrupted, triggering fibromyalgia-type pains, pains that move around, magnifying pain sensations, right? So we know if you give opioids to people with this type of pain, it's a disaster. It actually, that's how people, we go, how do people, how do we create the opioid crisis? We were giving opioids to people that shouldn't have opioids in the first place for this type of sensitized pain because it's strictly contraindicated, can't be done. But like you say, people are desperate. So they go, oh my God, I got relief. The drug wore off, the pain magnified. So, but, so the first thing is, what is the nature? You know that magnesium is more effective for this pain? than any drug, okay, in controlled studies. Microbiome is associated 90% and dis got the disruption with fibromyalgia pain. So what are we going to do now? We're going to solve all this pain by, and legitimately, if you're suffering, you know, with, with uh, cannabinoids. And I'm all for it because I use, I use cannabinoids as an exit drug when I'm getting people off of opioids, right? Because I'm fixing their problems, they have pain, and I have to now deal with the drug problems triggered by, you, you know, it's, so, but why, why are we going to think we're going to solve the microbiome problems and the disruption of this nervous system intensification of pain, which is proven, with throwing more drugs into the body? So, okay. so the first I question thing okay. is, yeah. people don't even know what they don't even know. So the, 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 the rampant use of drugs is so prevalent that people go, well, I'm suffering. I go, this is not a, you know, and of okay. course I have, Are we talking can you like imagine a, someone okay. coming to me mm -hmm. after 20 years of pain and drugs and literally they've been written off and I'm going, uh, how long is this going to take? And I'm going, well, I don't know, a month or two to sort this out. But the problems that you have isn't the underlying cause that's going to drop your pain. Is, is the drug withdrawal that we have to... So I'm really... My pharmacy background is really managing drug withdrawals. So are the, a person comes in still with, with pain? Yeah. Okay, so say they're open-minded to what you're talking about is the, is the 
deprescribing and and trying to manage withdrawals of going these medications. What medication or what would you be creating for an individual that is in excruciating pain? Um, if I, like if if it's a um, spinal or if it's listen, I had the shingles last June. Like I was in it doesn't I was in excruciating pain. Um, and you know, I'm just trying to <laughs> sleep it off and, and kind of, what's like, the real what, time, you what, know, what's a, you know, if someone comes in with an acute, yeah, okay. limiting pain, I, that's not where the, the, the tragedies are occurring, right? Right. But, you know, are we safe to, okay. Are, if it's a short term, um, something has spiked or something has gone on with someone's body, can, are we safe to say, listen, short term, you need to take the Tylenol 3, you need to take yes. the Advil, you but need to take the Motrin. You know, but well, you know are Canada we... is like the number one prescribers of narcotics in the world. Oh, no, number two behind the U.S. per capita. Number two. Why do you need narcotics to give to a, to a, someone with a, a shingles infection? Why don't you give them Tylenol, anti-inflammatories, lop? Topical well, I didn't get on it. I didn't. Top, get, that's topical, what I did. I topical, did. No, you I see did. my point. Yeah. The, the question is, you shouldn't. When when we're we're so customized in this country to opioids, we have an opioid crisis. Eighty percent of the people on opioids are starting because of prescribed opioids for a, or a so-called <laughs> legitimate pain. What are they doing with this stuff in the first place? So starting even with the smallest things, yes. the smallest things sometimes are going to be triggering. Yeah. And legitimately, if you have a microbiome issue, if what if your pain is going to be intensified with shingles, by the way? Well, okay. Let me, let, let's talk about this because <laughs> my, and, and I've said this honestly, like my shingles, which happened last June, was the trigger for me and a part of my decision to leave my work. I was sleep deprived. My body had reacted after 10 years of getting up at 3.30 in the morning. I listened to my body and I, I chose not to take, you know, these like these pain medications. I mean, I took the Advils and I yeah, put on the creams, but I was, you know, and, but I, there was a part of me that felt how easy it is to fall into Th that Ooh, system. And this place. was coming from a, a pretty healthy individual in the first place. So I was thinking, gosh, what would it have been like for me to have all these other symptoms than having to deal with this? Yeah, what if someone gave you a narcotic for that, which can happen? But I, I, cho I chose, you know, I, I, to not have to go and That's do right. anything else. But why is it your choice? Why, why should you have been presented a narcotic in the first place? Maybe, and again, someone... It goes into my pharmacy and we question our narcotic. They'll ask me, what do you question me for? You don't think my pain is real? You don't think, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It creates all this stuff. Are they stuff. defensive? Do, they, do you of find that they get defensive? Be. Of course we would be because we have an opioid culture. Okay, I, but I'm I'm sorry. Like I'm I'm looking at this. Like I I worked in a newsroom. I think of when you mention opioids, and I'm thinking what's happening on the streets of the city. No, it's happening in the doctor's offices and the pharmacies. That's where it's starting. That's, this is where it happens. That's my point. So what are we, what is the call to action at this point? What are, when we're having this dialogue, what do you want people to take from this conversation? What questions do they need to be asking? Do they need to be going into their medicine cabinets and going, okay, what exactly is in this medic medicine cabinet? Do people even do that anymore? Like, what's no, in there? No, because we've, it's too, just like I'm bringing up the B6 versus antidepressants in young women it's overwhelming you know people are overwhelmed when they can, can you imagine someone coming to me real case you know the doctor's written her off she's on 700 milligrams twice a day of oxycontin she had a motor vehicle accident so 10 years ago real but and real pain real, I would real pain and but her gut is shut down from the opioids. And, or so again, alcoholics or opioids, their gut shut down. And they go, well, that's just a side effect of the opioids. They literally had, she had to manually extract stool. Okay. Um, so she comes to see me and, and, you know, of course, the doctor said, you're wasting your time and your money seeing that guy. And she goes, well, you're, you've written me off. There's nothing I can do. I'm, I'm, you're just going to give me more, you know, you're giving me 1,400 milligrams of OxyContin and you gave me more drugs for breakthrough pain. 
can you like it, it blows your mind i mean if we would take you or i to take a tenth of that we'd die it's just crazy right so she comes to see me and if, and she's on a ppi because her gut's a mess so and i'm going love you know and, and all my pain is real and i'm and she go and yeah 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 i mean it's so okay first thing we're gonna do was gonna get you off the ppi like the drug for God, like how bizarre, like you, if you think about it, right? What? What does my God have to do with my pain? Like, oh, wow, fascinating statement, even though it's proven to be directly related to pain. So. What has happened with this patient? Off our gut improved two weeks, Drugs drop, pain drop, nine. She's on like 20, I think 30 milligrams a day Oxycontin. She couldn't leave the house, working, doing her whole life back, her gut's back, everything's back. So what does she say to you? Like, I, I mean, she's got to say, like, wow, I would think, like. Yeah. What? They call this alternative medicine. I, I going, I didn't do, I gave you magnesium. I fixed, I got you off the drug, which is killing you. I fixed your gut. She couldn't eat solid food, so I started giving me with our nutritionist team. We started making smoothies, getting the right smoothies to her, so we could. We then shifted like this, and we got we we her hormone system had shut down because of the narcotics. So we gave her the hormone. It just support and, and all of those, by the way, progesterone helps with pain, magnesium helps, but she couldn't eat, and so all these different B six helps with pain regulation. So all this stuff is shown. And, or you take more narcotics and die. Do you see, it's, the, the, the irony in me is like going, why would you do something that has no risk and has a huge proven benefit versus something that's, you know, and, and honestly, people often are just more like mesmerized that they've been in literally drug jail for years and they're going, well, how, you know, my pain is really real. How could something I don't know, no, no, this is about the biology of your, see, this is the biology of your brain and your nervous system. This is not discussion of real. If you really want to have a real discussion about the biology of pain, the biology of your brain, then you got to know about the biology of pain and the biology of your brain, because if you don't, you're just going to take opioids and painkillers, which you do know doesn't deal with the origin, does it? Yeah, but my origin was pain. I go, I know, that happened 14 years ago. It, that, the propagation of pain is coming from your brain and nervous system. You, you call it a drug jail. And I'm going to... Drug jail. Drug jail. And because I'm looking at the time, I, I've got to wrap this up. So I, I want to be able to ask you, taking that term, the drug jail, and, and hopefully having people who've been listening to this and, and, and kind of comparing it to maybe what they've gone through or what a loved one is going through... What would be your number one recommend, recommendation right now for people just to have an open mind or to ask themselves certain questions? Well, I think you, I think you have to be aware of how important uh, food and what you stick in your body is relative to your long-term prospects and your quality of life, right? And, you know, ultimately, pharmacists and doctors have been trained that food, you get it in your diet. And people, I, I hear that so many times ago. My doctor says I get in my diet. So I go, I guess he asked you what you ate. No. Well, with that, see, don't you understand? If, if someone doesn't ask you, says you can get it in your diet, and they haven't actually asked you what you eat, it's because they don't know or they don't care what you stick in your mouth. Now, that's a message. And, and why is that? Because pharmacists, doctors, have zero, zero, zero training in the relationship of food to health, other than you get it in your diet. I remember I went to this course, I've got five, four years of biochem about what the relationship of nutrients to health, and I had the nutrition course put on for pharmacists by a doctor, and they came in and said, you get it all in your diet, and left, and left. That was, my, that was the course for doctors and pharmacists on nutrition. That was my, I, at U of T, University of Toronto, the course on nutrition for pharmacists and doctors. The guy came in and said, you can get, you don't really need this course because you get everything in your diet and left. So you guys can all go, go home now. 
<laughs> we're trying to change. We're, 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 we're trying to change the dialogue. You had an afternoon off of having to go to classes. Uh, but this is just the start of the dialogue. I know in time we're going to have some of the nutritionists and some of the other uh, pharmacists and, and people that are working under NutriCam kind of go in with their expertise. If people are looking for more information, where should they go? Oh, they can come to us. I mean, again, as you get complicated, right? Obviously, right. it's it's a little deeper than what you do. But awareness is the beginning, right? Like, if one getting you, this conversation started. Yes. Yeah. NutriCam.com. NutriCam.com. Kent, thank you so much for coming in oh, today. Oh, it's a pleasure. And that is a wrap. That is episode four of <laughs> Living Your Life with Leanne Lyon.